Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all having a fantastic evening. Tonight I'm going to be doing another movie review. Now this is a French horror film, so spoken in French, English subtitles. It was made in 2001, so it's not a new wave of French horror, it's quite old. It is directed by Claire Dennis, and this movie is called Trouble Every Day. Now this stars Patrice Daly, who was the bad woman off Inside, which is a film of much later. So for those of you who are fans of her, you may be interested in this film to see her in a different sort of role. So the story is as follows, and I have to apologise, I've done a bit of running this, um, this evening, a bit of fitness, and sometimes when it's really cold my throat swells up afterwards, so unfortunately my throat's a little bit swollen right now, so if I have a few little pauses in between words then uh, that's the reason I apologise. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of a good review. So this review, uh, as I said, it's a French horror film, and the story is as follows. Shane and June Brown are an American couple honeymooning in Paris in an effort to nurture their new life together, a life complicated by Shane's mysterious and frequent visits to a medical clinic, where cutting-edge studies of the human libido are undertaken. When Shane seeks out a self-exiled expert in the field, he happens upon the doctor's wife, another victim of the same studies. She has become so dangerous and emotionally paralysed by the condition that her husband imprisons her by day in their home. It is Shane's chance encounter with the woman that triggers an event so cataclysmic and shocking it might just lead him to rediscover the tranquility he seeks to restore for himself and his new bride. So we have Shane and June, they're a recent married couple and they're honeymooning in Paris. So June is thinking that that's the only visit, that's the only reason why they're in Paris is to spend their honeymoon. But Shane has a, has a hidden motive. Now that motive is he goes to this medical clinic where he participated in an experiment, a study, on the human libido. So he is really feeling the effects, some side effects that are quite nasty and he really wants to see the doctor responsible for these exper or these studies so he can get sort of a cure to prevent, because um, he's getting, as a side effect, he's getting these urges. Now I'm not going to give away what they are, but they do relate to cannibalism. So he's starting to get freaked out and this doctor responsible for the experiment, he is self-exiled. So this adds further worry for him because, you know, the reason why he's exiled it has to do with the experiment. So it kind of gives him the impression that something really is wrong here. And his worries are further magnified by the fact that this doctor's wife has been um, subjected to the same studies and she has in a, is in a much worse state and she is so emotionally paralysed she doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. She has no remorse. So her uh, sh her stage is really advanced, and this is where Shane is headed, unless he can get to the doctor and try and get a a cure. So Shane is going through, and he's trying to find this doctor, and he ends up meeting the doctor's wife, and that creates a very awkward moment. And so Shane really, really wants to find this doctor before it's too late, because the urges that he's getting is getting stronger and stronger. And yeah, so that's as far as I'm going to go with the story. It is a very complicated story to explain, but it's easy enough to follow. So if you want to know more, then please go and find out for yourself. Now, I will say that although this is a French film, the majority of it is spoken in English. So if you don't like subtitles, you won't have to put up with them too much because there's not a hell of a lot of French dialogue. Because the couple are American, a lot of it is spoken in English. I'm not sure if it's dubbed in English because the voices seemed a little bit off. But, as I said, it is in English for the majority, so you, even if you don't have subtitles for the French dialogue, you still get what's going on because, as I said, not a lot of the dialogue is in French. So, for those of you who don't like subtitles, this one will still appeal to you. Now, my thoughts on the film. Being a 2001 film, I had the expectation that this one was going to be like the recent French horrors, and this is where I was disappointed. It's nothing like the new wave of French horror. Yes, it is very um, gory in some parts but it is a very different style. I actually thought this one was more like a giallo rather than a French horror film because there is not much dialogue in it at all. Now, as I said, limited dialogue in French, but there's limited dialogue in English as well, but the majority of the dialogue that you do hear is in English. But it is a very, um, you know, the visuals do the talking for the most part in this film. So it really did feel like an arty kind of film, as I said, like a giallo, the soundtrack, and the bright colours really suited a giallo sort of feel. So if you're a French horror fan, you're going into this one expecting something like recent French horrors, 
then you're going to be disappointed. So you really have to come into this one with the, the right mindset and expectations. So this is nothing like the more recent French horror, but I will say that the gore is of French standard. Now, the gore is few and far between, but when it does happen, it is very nasty, very horrible. Nothing that you're going to say cool to. Um, it's just really horrible, painful. Uh, it's a very explicit film. Now, there is expli uh, explicit sex because the majority of this film surrounds the human libido. So while the main character, he feels the need for sex a lot, but after sex, it really results in something very barbaric because the human libido studies also have the side effect of cannibalism. So that, you know, there is nothing arousing about this film because after the, the, the sex scenes, it results in something, you know, hideous. So uh, everything about this film is very, very awkward. So go into this one with extreme caution. Now, the acting was very good. Vincent Gallo, who played the main character, I really didn't like his character, but he did a good job in betraying someone who was a decent kind of guy but is slowly descending into madness because of the, the studies that he was subjected to. But the person who steals the show for me is Patrice Daly. Now, she is an evil sort of person in this film, but very different from her role in Inside. Now, in Inside, she was just a straight-out psycho. In this film, she's a victim of circumstances. She's a victim of the studies that she was put through. So although she's very emotionally paralysed, she's very, very scary, she's, there's also a level of sympathy for this character. So a very, very different role to that one of Inside. In this one, she doesn't speak very much at all. Actually, I only think she says one line. So it does show that she can act with her body language as well. So it really does show her versatility because, you know, she was very, very good in this one also. And she's fast becoming one of my favourite actresses, you know. Um, yeah, but she's a really, really good actress. And this just proves it, that she has a lot of versatility <clears throat> and that, you know, she's not just a one-trick pony. So the acting was very good. But, you know, I didn't really enjoy this film. I thought it was a little bit overrated. My expectations weren't met. I just feel that some of the scenes without so much dialogue dragged. Now, some of the scenes just went on for too long, and they kind of got boring. You know, they, Claire Dennis did a good job in creating a film with limited dialogue, and that's something different. But there were just some scenes that I think she could have cut by about a minute, and they just keep going on and on, and it kind of gave me a feel of Michael Haneke. Now, I'm not a fan of his stuff at all. I think he does the same thing. The visuals are too long without dialogue, and it just gets a little bit boring. And I felt that this film really did fall under that category of boring, and it was a letdown, um, I have to be honest. Now, the gore was very, very good. You know, it was very brutal. So a lot of um, horror fans will like the fact that it was very bloody and very graphic, and just a very nasty film. But overall, I thought it was overrated, and the fact that it doesn't have too much dialogue, I shouldn't show the back, the fact that it that doesn't have too much dialogue, it really just got to me because I am a fan of films with the art house kind of feel, but I felt that this film just went for a bit too long. It would have benefited from a little bit more dialogue, especially in some scenes. So definitely, it, it's a good, it's an all right film. I'll say that. I won't say it's a great film. It's all right, but I was expecting so much more because the hype surrounding French horror for me at the moment is so high. And to see this one, it's really different, as I said, more of a giallo. So just go into this one with caution. It's not like your usual French horror. Um, yeah, so you will have to wait for the, the horror parts, the, the violence. The sex is very graphic, so be aware of that. Uh, it doesn't really shy away from much. It's not hardcore. There's no penetration, but almost you can almost see it. So it's very, very graphic. But as I said, nothing is arousing because straight after a scene, a loving scene, it results in something very, very bloody. So I thought the ending was pretty good as well, but overall it was slightly disappointing. It didn't live up to the standard that French horror has set. So that's my review of Trouble Every Day. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe this review gave you um, a little bit of interest to go and see it. So support French horror as much as possible. All right, guys, that's my review for tonight. I'll be reviewing another film very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Bye.